Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you very much for having me here. It's really a, a pleasure, um, pleasure on to be back home again with you. Um, I'm going to uh, essentially speak of why we are interested in producing antioxidants and why from black liquor produced from straw and why for biodiesel. Anyway, um, before going into that very interesting uh, stuff, uh, some things about uh, Spain or uh, we believe that maybe you are interested in. So, the University of Zaragoza is, is here in the city of Zaragoza, north of Spain, uh, not far from, from the French border and the Dominion. Uh, more or less the same distance from Madrid and from, from Barcelona, little to the, to the north. Uh, Spain is a country like is uh, quite populated. We are about 50 million people. The, the area of Spain is one eighth of uh, the area of, of Quebec, so we are more crowded than, than you are here. Um, no, <laughs> not all the Spanish people uh, fight with the bulls. We are not. Uh, I'm sorry if that disappoints uh, you. <laughs> and no, we don't sleep siesta uh, unfortunately uh, every day. Weekends, maybe people in the south, which is really hot in uh, the south of Spain, yeah, may, they may, but uh, usually we, we don't. We just eat and then go back to work. But yes, it is true. We uh, For lunch, we spend a lot of time there in a post lunch time just yes, speaking and socializing with each other especially that happens when we go out night for for tapas uh, probably you all, all of you already know but it's going for tapas you go to a bar you eat something uh, drink something and move to the next one or to other one to to eat uh, I don't want to get you disappointed if you go to Spain tapas are small okay uh, if you are looking for big tapas you have to go to a different place Near, nearby countries uh, have big tapas, but no, not in Spain. Um, main industry in Spain is tourism. We receive a lot of tourists from uh, from UK, from France, from uh, Italy, from Portugal. Uh, depends on what you're looking for, probably we have it. You lo are looking for old buildings, maybe a thousand years old, we have. This is not old enough for you. We want 2,000 years old. We already have. So we have Roman rooms all, all over Spain. Maybe you want to be in the beach and you don't want to feel alone. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> or maybe you want to go to the beach and feel alone. You are also welcome. Okay, so we have a lot of, of different pla places and things to do. I know that you here in Quebec, you love nature and well, mountains. We have them. Okay? So if you want to come uh, skiing or you want to come hiking, uh, we have uh, a lot of mountains there for you to get lost. Uh, well, I, I know that in a dangerous position now, I'm standing between you and a barbecue. Uh, I don't want to be a nuisance, so at any moment, if you think it's enough, you just give me a signal or you just directly shoot me. It's OK. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if you heard about this, this thing, it's LinkedIn. Maybe all of you know about that. Uh, lignin is uh, a biopolymer. Lignin is aromatic in nature, and uh, it's already been produced uh, uh, every year. About 70 million tons of lignin are produced. Most of them are produced in the paper industry. Uh, hopefully, in the short future, we will have uh, more lignin coming from some biodefinery process, as the result one. Right? We'll see. Uh, this the the. The, the end of this lignin is mostly for for burning, and people usually you, you can read in the in the in the papers that is a like, like bad thing because lignin is so valuable you can do anything with with it, anything with it is money uh, so far. Uh, well, this is the probably you probably know this. This is the structure of lignin. Many different uh, uh, bonds between the the oxygen and the carbon and the carbon and the carbon that makes it uh, like difficult to to deal with. Uh, Why well, we are trying to use lignin containing black liquor? Uh, I guess most of you know what black liquor is. Chemical engineering students, chemistry students, 
any any answer? No? Too shy now? Look at that. Black liquor is the byproduct of the residue from the pulp and paper industry. You want to produce uh, cellulose pulp for paper, you digest some dengue material with chemicals at certain temperatures and temperature, and you release the cellulose and you get a liquid which is a black liquor. The, for the produ for producing virgin fiber, what you have, the most common process that you have is the craft process. The craft process you use more food and you digest uh, under pressure and temperature with uh, sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfide, and you get a very nice pulp that you can bleach and produce writing paper or tissue for uh, sanitary uses. Uh, we are interested in this in this process. We are interested in the use of non wood materials. With non wood materials as straw or bagasse or miscanthus, you digest in a simpler process, only using soda as a chemical. It's a semi-chemical process, and you produce a, a pulp that is not uh, easily bleachable, but you can use it for producing cardboard, cardboard paper, because of its uh, it has really good mechanical properties, which are the important ones for for the for the cardboard production. Uh, you get the you get the pulp, which is your your, pro, your product, and you get the black liquor. In the craft uh, process, the, the linification is quite intense, so you have a, a liquid with uh, around 30% solids. Most of it is is lignin. When you do it with uh, with soda, you get uh, less delignification, and you have about 20, 20, 20 10% solids, maybe less. We, we are getting like about around 70 seven percent sorry. Uh, what you do with, with this? Black liquor, uh, craft black liquor is evaporated, so its concentration is increased till 85, even I read that 95% solids. Then you can pump it uh, still into a black liquor recovery boiler. Then you burn the, the organics, you produce heat and electricity. In fact, uh, paper industries sell the electricity that they don't use. And you recover the the, the chemical uh, the chemical for for the pulping, so it's a, like a closed process. This you cannot do with uh, soda black liquor from from non wood materials. Uh, non wood materials have a higher content in ash. It they have uh, or they have silica, and silica in the black liquor makes it uh, more viscous, more difficult to to concentrate. So you, you don't burn it so easily. And in the boiler you have. Uh, Scales you have deposit of an organic which are really really troublesome. So, in spite of producing with this process uh, a very nice a very nice pulp with very good uh, mechanical properties, this process is being abandoned all over the world because you cannot do anything with with black liquor. You just throw it someplace. It's not easily uh, available. So um, the the process is good, but Instead of using uh, virgin, virgin pulp in the, in the industry, they are using starch, which is expensive, and you can use it for food. So it's not really a really good thing. So what can we do with lignin? Several things. We can use it directly. We can use it uh, doing some, some reaction. Uh, those are different things that are being proposed for, for lignin. Uh, we are trying to do something between here and here. To hydro between hydro treatment and hydro in the things that I'm going to show you later. Uh, why biodiesel? Biodiesel is a renewable source of biofuel for mixing for mixing with uh, fossil diesel. Uh, when you burn it, the combustion is is, is cleaner. You have less, less smoke. Uh, you have oxygen in the biodiesel. So when you burn in a, in, a, in an engine, the smoke is less less dirty, and it's supposed to be carbon neutral. The most uh, usual way to process to, to get biodiesel is by transesification of vegetable oils or animal fat. So you have a one triglyceride with a short chain alcohol as methanol with a catalyst, usually sodium hydroxide or sodium uh, or potassium hydroxide uh, homogeneous phase. You produce like fatty acid methyl esters and glycerol as a byproduct. Biodiesel is really important in Europe, more than more than here. Eighty percent of the biofuels that we are using in, in Europe is, is bio is biodiesel. Only ten percent, twenty percent bioethanol, a bit of biogas in, for transport. 
Here the situation is, is different. You, see this is, you can see that this is North America. So this is ethanol and this is uh, biodiesel. Whereas in Europe, this is biodiesel and this is ethanol. So the situation is quite different. Our, uh, our cars are, mo are mostly uh, diesel fuel. Here, it's, uh, you, you don't find diesel in many of the gas stations in, in Spain. You have in, in all of them. Uh, you can use vegetable oils, so you can use uh, used oils or, or fats. Uh, this is in the US. You see they, they are using more and more uh, raw or new vegetable oil uh, and less uh, used oil. Uh, in Europe, the situation is different. Um, there is a the indirect, indirect land use change directive that uh, uh, does not allow us to produce uh, biodiesel from like sunflower uh, oil or soy oil or whatever because th this is for food. So they don't want to change the price of the food and they don't want to change the use of the land to grow like an uh, energetic crop instead of growing food. Uh, I don't have the numbers right, right now, but uh, now in, in Europe it's more expensive, it's more expensive to buy use cooking oil that new cooking oil. So you can make money just by buying oil, frying something, throwing the something and selling the selling the cooking the cooking oil. The use cooking oil because it's more expensive because there is less and everybody wants that. So we have like changed the paradigm of the economy uh, with this with this directive. It is really no, no sense. Uh, as a whole, in Europe, we are the main producers, but uh, here our southern neighbors uh, are as a country the, the, the ones who produce more, more biodiesel. Why do you need antioxidants? Uh, biodiesel is a organic product, it's a natural product, and uh, it's prone to oxidation. Uh, you can see really nothing here in this slide, but here, this line is the oxidation instability. So the lower oxidation instability is caused by a higher uh, double degrees, uh, uh, number of double, double degrees in, in your material. So you have something which is uh, like uh, unsaturated, which is good because uh, the viscosity is, is lower and because uh, uh, freezing point is lower, which is also important for, for power diesel, uh, it will oxidize more, more easily. So, uh, oxidation is a chain reaction, it happens through uh, intermediate radicals, uh, you need to add something that creates a radical, which is uh, like cold radical that reacts slowly. Then with this, you, you stop the, the, the oxidation chain reaction. Uh, usually, what is being used in the, in the biodiesel is there are is generally compounds. Are compounds that have an uh, labile hydrogen that uh, makes a uh, forms there a uh, cold, uh, slow-reacting radical. So, why not? Why not using a source of phenolic compounds as a source of antioxidant? That's what uh, we are trying to do uh, at this moment uh, in my research work. What we do for this is mostly everything. We digest the, the straw with uh, soda to produce uh, black liquor. At this moment, we are discarding the, the pulp, but we are starting to, or we will start to soon work uh, again with the, with the paper as we used in the past. With the black liquor, uh, we produce the additive by depolymerization in a batch reactor, the ones that you have here. Uh, we produce the biodiesel because uh, commercial biodiesel already has antioxidants in it. You cannot buy it without antioxidants, so we cannot use it. And then we blend the thing that we call additive with the uh, biodiesel and test the oxidation stability. So, we take barley or wheat straw, we digest at around 100 degrees C, atmospheric pressure, it's like an oven, oven cooker. Uh, liquid solid ratio is important for the, for the pulp, now maybe it's in, I say 10, but we are going higher to 15 or 20 to 1, with 10% uh, of uh, sodium hydroxide uh, uh, with related to the weight of the straw that we are using. Uh, we cook it for three hours and we get the black liquor. Black liquor, when it's dry, you have around 40% carbon in it and uh, 
a nice amount of ash, which comes from the sodium hydroxide that, that we use. It's one third of the weight of the solid is ash. Of, of it, out of it is sodium. So about 10% of the of the black liquor solid is, is sodium that we have. This is important because uh, sodium, sodium hydroxide, is a homogeneous catalyst for uh, limiting the polymerization. So we don't, at this moment we are not adding any other catalyst for the, the polymerization. We already have it. After uh, producing the black liquor, we get the solid in order to have a homogeneous uh, concentration of 7%. We use about 200 grams of black liquor, 40 grams of black liquor solid, 7%. And we directly apply a iothermal treatment with autogenous pressure. Uh, here, uh, we added, in some of the experiments, we added formic acid. Um, I will explain a little later about that. Um, Reaction time one hour and different temperatures. And we add or no formic acid or the same weight of formic acid as of uh, black liquor solid. Uh, suppose that uh, formic acid, when you heat it, it will decompose. We form CO2 and hydrogen. Hydrogen can be a stabilizer for the um, radicals that form and make more uh, solid uh, during the polymerization. Uh, the reactor is uh, the impeller of the reactor has some holes, so it's supposed that when you are running the reaction, the gas over the liquid is being recirculated uh, through, the, through the liquid during the, during the experiment. Uh, this is based on previous experiments that we had um, better results using formic acid, at, not using formic acid, but we were pre pre previous and uh, we are not really seeing what we are expecting, as you see right now. Uh, once we do the reaction, we filter, we remove the, the unsoluble solids that are precipitated, and the liquid we extract with isopropyl acetate. The, the part that is extractable uh, with isopropyl acetate is that when we dry and we call the additive. We, we tried with several uh, several organic solvents, and with this is we get the better results. We are not really sure. We are not sure at all of why why is that. Um, so once we have the additive, what we have is to mix mixture with uh, blend with bio diesel. With diesel, we do it with uh, sunflower oil. <coughs> we buy a local a local store. It's just for food. It's clean clean oil. We test it five sixty degrees C, six to one methanol or alcohol to oil uh, molar ratio, using uh, potassium hydroxide catalyst. We get the glycerol, and then we get the bio diesel that we have to clean. We wash with uh, acidic water. Uh, we remove the water, we wash again. Um, uh, we have like a very good, very good biodiesel. After that, we have uh, to, to blend it. We have been using 1% of additive uh, and 99% of biodiesel. Um, we could use maybe a little more, but uh, due to the standardization of the biodiesel, you cannot have more than 3.5% by weight of things that are not fatty acid methyl esters. Okay? Must be rich enough to have at least 96.5 percent of fatty acid methyl ester in order to be called and commercialized as bodies. Not of the not of the the lignin that we obtain by by extraction is is soluble in biodiesel, so we have to centrifugate and separate. So the real dosage of of lignin in the biodiesel is is lower than one percent. So we still are uh, fulfilling the, the standard. For the oxidation, we have a small equipment that works really well. You heat the biodiesel at uh, 140 degrees C under uh, 700 kilopascal of uh, oxygen, and you uh, wait to see how the pressure drop. Oxygen is consumed, and when the pressure drops 10% over the maximum of the maximum pressure that we get, that time is a technical time is the oxidation stability time. So the longer uh, that uh, uh, it takes to fall the, the the pressure, the oxygen pressure. The better is your bodies. Uh, I'm going to show you now some results uh, about according to the product distribution, uh, the oxidation stability, and what we got from GCMS uh, of the of the composition. Uh, as you could guess from yesterday, Marine's thesis. I love uh, error bars and I love uh, statistics in my data. Unfortunately, here I don't have. Uh, those were the first ones that we did because uh, we were quite eager to test uh, formic acid. 
And now we are uh, doing some replicates and getting the, the, the error bars, but I, I don't have it them with me. So after introducing 14 grams of likely per solid in the reactor and recovering them, and then filtering, and the liquid um, extracting, uh, doing the extraction of the liquid uh, uh, after removing the solids, uh, and drying the isopropyl acetate, we have some amount of additive which ranges from 26 to 7 percent. The black line is the uh, production of additive without, sorry, with formic acid, and the red line is the production of additive without formic acid, only black liquor and heat, time, uh, temperature, time, and pressure. Uh, so you see that uh, for when we don't use uh, formic acid, there is not really a big uh, change in, uh, in the solid production. Actually, it seems that it falls down at a higher temperature, which is quite strange. I was expecting that it will increase because of the importance of, of repolymerization reactions. Uh, uh, when we use uh, formic acid, it decreases from 26 to, to 7. Here, you, you cannot see the effect uh, of the use of formic acid. So, well, here, 26 is not that bad over the over the black liquor solids. More than you take into account, the black liquor solids has 33% of, of ash, and we are not discounting the ash here. This is only organic. Uh, but uh, the effect of temperature seems to be like uh, not interesting. If you take into account the oxidation, the oxidation, the oxidation behavior uh, for solids, it happens that. Uh, when we use formic acid, we have a higher amount of, of solids, unsealable solids that are useless for us, uh, and it increases with, um, with temperature. And only at the highest temperature, we have a smaller, a lower uh, solid production with, for, with formic acid. Uh, we think that this happens because uh, when you use an acid with a black liquor, the black liquor has produced has a pH of ar around 12. 11 point something or and 12. When you use um, when you use uh, formic acid, the pH the pH goes down, and at about five, the lignin starts uh, precipitating. So at the lower temperature, we precipitate the liquid, and temperature is not enough to, I think, to to depolymerize that that solid. So only only at the higher at the higher temperature. Uh, this is the important thing for us: the oxidation stability. We were expecting that with um, Formic acid, we would increase a lot the oxidation stability, and we increase it a lot, but not so, dif so different when we use uh, formic acid and we don't don't use formic acid. So in, in this sense, it's kind of disappointing the the result because we cannot see the we cannot see the difference. Uh, but this interest that that well, this is a average of uh, biodiesel, biodiesel. Every time that we do a blending with the biodiesel and, and the and the lignin additive. We measure the uh, stability time of the neat biodiesel. Biodiesel just as uh, as produced because it has some variability. It goes from let's say eight minutes to maybe fifteen minutes, which is quite high. Uh, if, uh, if you take, I mean, this is the limit that we have calculated for the for fulfilling the the standard for commercialization. So. Here we are over the over the standard. Yeah, we can say it. Um, Bristles are really good. In, in if you if you see the improvement, we are getting improvements over five hundred percent. So we improve a lot the oxidation stability. Uh, first is, is first thing is we don't know why we don't know what is increasing the oxidation stability. I will show you now and. Yeah, we can get five five hundred percent, but we don't know how to change that. I mean, what changes and makes it uh, two hundred instead of, of, of four hundred? We don't know if, if it's, it's a matter of solubility of the lignin or a matter of composition. Uh, so far, we're looking for this like for two three years and still not, not getting closer. Uh, we analyze the the composition and volatiles by GCMS FID for for quantification. Uh, those are the most representative, uh, easily uh, identifiable uh, phenolic compounds. There are acetic acid and there are, there are compounds, uh, ketones or something like that, probably coming from the 
uh, from the emissaries of the, of the straw, uh, you see that uh, the higher the temperature, the lower the, the volatile content. And we saw that the higher the temperature, the higher the oxidation stability. So it's not really that uh, these compounds are the main responsible for increasing the oxidation stability. Here you can see in red the ones that we tested directly with, with biodiesel, as phenol, methoxyphenol, well, call it over there. Uh, those compounds hardly have an effect on oxidation stability. Yeah, it's more or less, uh, even when we do the, the thing of adding isopropyl acetate, the compound removing the isopropyl acetate, oxidation, oxidation instability lowers. It means that uh, the, the thermal treatment for doing the blending uh, worsens the oxidation stability. Uh, only catechol and uh, 3-methoxy catechol, or, or 3-methoxy catechol here, really have a, a, a significant, significant um, uh, oxidation instability effect on, on biodiesel. But uh, you see the volatile content, it seems as it's not really related uh, with, the, with the oxidation instability that we, that we see. Since other, otherwise, less, the lower volatile uh, content, the higher oxidation instability. So, probably there are, or guess almost for sure, there are other compounds that we cannot see by GCMS that are causing the oxidation instability. Maybe are the dimers or trimers from, from lignin, but uh, we have not, we haven't figured out how to, how to analyze them or quantify them. So, to finish, you need to shoot me. Uh, we have done something, and we know that something works well for biodiesel. Uh, we can improve 500% the oxidation stability of biodiesel with a small amount of, of lignin the right compounds. Uh, in the temperature range that we that we studied, it seems that the higher temperature, at least till 325 degrees C, the higher the, the oxidation stability. Um, formic acid increased the ITG at lower temperatures, but it didn't increase significantly the, the oxidation stability of the, of the additive that we, that we get. So more work, more work is needed. So I welcome you just to join me and add your expertise on, on, this, on this field. Uh, that's all. Merci beaucoup for your attention. Uh, any question I will try to, to answer. If I don't know, I will try to avoid it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, who opens the fire? Pivotally, not to little. I have a question. Lignin is a very is a natural material, so I guess there's a variability in the composition of lignin uh, depending on which source of. Uh, yeah. And even if you have selected a source, I guess yeah. there is a variability that comes naturally. Yes. Um, For sure. What is the part of the you don't control what you uh, precisely what you are uh, testing uh, when you, you are starting with the black liquor? I guess one test is with a certain composition, the next test might be with another? No. no. What we did is we, for a long time, we cooked a lot of straw. We produced a lot of black liquor. Ah. We dried because, because it uh, degrades uh, more or less easily. And then after drying, we mix uh, everything and we take, have the solid and we produce from that, that solid, we produce the black liquor that we're using. So you have only one source of liquor. Yeah. It's only in this case, it's only barley straw. Uh, produces produced from uh, one, yeah, one of those that we bought from uh, nearby. But when it would be the time to apply these conclusions to a real case, you yeah. have to take into account the natural variability. Yeah, probably will change not only with the plant, or with the crop, it will, it will change from January to let's say April. Right, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's for sure. And will will it mask the effect that you are seeing? Uh, I don't will, think so. Will it change the conclusion that I, you are. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. But I don't know. I mean, I don't feel it will change because when you like 
take uh, this pro and you digest it and then you vaporize, you're like doing like a uh, straight cut over the over the thing. But it may it may change. But I don't think it will be really important. Yeah, it, may, it may change more, for example, if you use like poplar instead of straw. But it mean mean composition is different. Uh, as you know, there are like the three main propane units uh, uh, for the lignin, and the, the distribution of those three main propane units depends a lot on the on the raw material that you have. Probably that is more related to the oxidation <laughs> stability. I mean, uh, we could know if we could like analyze what is happening, what is happening there, what is causing the oxidation stability. At this moment, we are too too far from from that. One question about it? Anyone? Anyone else? Yeah, yes, uh, I have one, one question. Thanks for the good uh, results. I was wondering why specifically isopropyl acetate and what is its role? And the next one would be um, you are using formic acid. At the end of the reaction, the formic acid is totally converted into carbon dioxide and hydrogen, or you are having some traces of it left. For the first question, I don't remember, so I will answer the second question. You make me the first one okay. uh, again. Uh, formic acid is uh, totally decomposed, but at 250, we see, you can see traces, no traces. The rest is uh, CO, CO2, and hydrogen. Okay, and when we uh, when we end the reaction with formic acid, the pressure is higher than we don't. I mean, a, a bit amount of gas is formed if you don't use um, you don't use formic acid. You, you have some residual pressure when you cool down the reactor. But when you use formic acid, the pressure is like 20 or 30 bar or something like that. I don't remember now. Uh, because it's, it's decomposed. At 250 to 25, I don't know if you have this show me something at 225. At 250, there is some traces in the middle because that we can see. But uh, not, not a lot. I mean, most of it is already decomposed. And the first yeah. question was? The hydrogen produced, is it uh, consumed or it is? We yeah, haven't yes. closed the balance on, on hydrogen. I think that something is consumed. We, when we use formic acid, I didn't, I didn't show the, the, the graph. Uh, by FTIR, we can see that uh, something is appearing. Uh, something is appearing in, in, the, in, the, in the FTIR signal. Uh, probably is uh, metoxic groups. The toxic groups are being removed by, by, by hydrogen. And we thought that by removing those, we could get maybe some uh, hydroxyl groups that are like good for, for oxidation stability, for dealing with the hydrogen. But uh, we haven't seen that uh, in this specific, uh, those specific experiments, not, not, not clearly. So when you say you are uh, removing methoxy, that means you are hydrogenating that uh, phenyl, uh, let's say that. A little bit, yeah. And you are getting methanol? Or? No, I don't know. I, I don't think we, we saw methanol in the, in the DCMS, because methanol comes close to the isopropyl acetate and then the, the, the tetra is off. But we, we may have it. First question was yeah, uh, so why what's the role of isopropyl acetate and why specifically oh, yeah, isopropyl? Yeah. This, is, this is a good question. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the truth uh, I can try to elaborate it a little more. We use uh, isopropyl acetate, we use uh, ethyl acetate, and we use a bunch of others uh, long ago. Uh, acetates and especially isopropyl acetate uh, gave a better result. What I think is that isopropyl acetate is uh, like uh, really well, well mixed with our diesel. Let me explain. When we go to the uh, I probably wrote, uh, yeah, wrote about, uh, isopropyl acetate at 60 degrees C evaporates at, uh, let me just uh, made up the number. 250 millibar or something like that. Yeah, it's around that. Okay. When you have a, a isopropyl acetate with power diesel and you get a 60 degree C and you get a 
250 millibar, nothing evaporates. So you have to lower more and more the, the pressure. And, and at the end, in order to remove the last traces of isopropyl acetate, we, we go to the highest vacuum that you get, like uh, 10 millibar or 6 millibar or 20 millibar, I don't remember. Then you remove the last trace of isopropyl acetate. So isopropyl acetate somehow uh, has something similar with our diesel that makes it uh, non-ideal non uh, blending. And uh, that happens especially with the isopropyl acetate. So I think it's the chemical nature of isopropyl acetate that makes it like more similar to biodiesel, so we extract something which is more mixable with biodiesel, or something like that. We also tested that you take the, the lignin additive, you take biodiesel and you blend them, and you measure the oxidation stability. It's not as good as if you take biodiesel, lignin, and isopropyl acetate, you blend the three of them, and then remove the isopropyl acetate. There is a significant, significant increase in, the, in oxidation stability when you do that. I think it's because it's difficult blending lignin with anything. And uh, with that, we get a better, better blending. Excellent for the presentation. Um, what about the, the ashes that you have? Uh, you said that you have like more than 33%. Are they like uh, combining the, the solid, transferring the aqueous phase? Or what, what part do they come from or do they go? Both. <laughs> no, no, they, no. Where, where they go? They go. They, they mainly stay in the, the aqueous phase. What we get is basically no, no ash. Uh, now at this moment we are we are doing we are doing I think I mean uh, it's not that this is the the solution for lignin and biodiesel and world peace I know uh, um, part of the isopropyl acetate stays in the in water mm -hmm. so that probably you need to maybe concentrate and burn or something like that. Like Probably uh, after the depromization, we could concentrate uh, it more than without treatment because uh, viscosity is not as uh, that already no viscosity is not as high when you hydro treat the the, the lignin. But uh, still, uh, a far we are far far away of thinking and getting money from lignin with, with this. And uh, what do they currently use for antioxidants? Biodiesel. Uh, EHT, still something. Uh, Utilated hydro <coughs> something, propyl calate, uh, pyrogalol, all or are come from from fossil mm. fossil oil okay. obtained by distillation. They are phenolic but not renewable. Okay. Unless you think oil, fossil oil is renewable, that we can discuss about. Uh, Depending on the time scale. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they come from that and they are pretty expensive. So the, the, the main thing I, in this case, in order to make money, is not to, I think, it's not to like uh, produce something that is very, very valuable, which is the, the additive, but to get rid of the black liquor. Mm. You get off the black liquor, you forget about biodiesel, and you produce uh, pulp. Pulp is, has, has, could have a good price for the for the people who are making, uh, they are producing cardboard paper, paper for cardboard. Yeah, because starch that we are using for giving the mechanical properties is not is not cheap, and they are, they are using a lot. Uh, the, the, the paper companies spend a lot of money in. In additives for for the paper, a lot. A lot is uh, like uh, uh, tens of thousands of euros per day. In that, three hundred and sixty sixty two in the case of the company that's in Zaragoza days per year. So a lot of money is is, is running there. Last question. So you said that you are uh, concentrating black liquor in order to make it stable and not, you know, to the solid, yeah. for side reactions. Now that you are having it in solid form, how are you sure that it's not further, I mean, like degrading or polymerizing? And the 
since it's difficult to analyze and get uh, we keep it dry and uh, in this form yeah you can yeah, try yes, ensure uh, that it's in the same form okay. as today and three months later yeah we, we, we keep it dry uh, actually I tightly closed and the one that I'm going to use I have it in the, in the oven 105 degrees C and then I keep faith I mean I think I don't think it will degrade because uh, uh, water activity is zero at that, at that point. So, and when you concentrate before concentration and after concentration, what's the are there any change in the carbon content? Uh, not in pH, not in, I mean, not that we have seen. So, what is that being evaporated? Then? I don't know. What, what is it that is being evaporated? Because it's like we are using liquid form and we are making it as solid. Yeah. So. Then we add it's water again. Operating. Then we add water again, and we play with that. I don't, I don't understand the question. No, uh, so the black liquor, yeah. it's mostly the thing, right? Or is there some water in that which is making black liquor is ninety three percent water, seven percent solids. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. Okay. Very <laughs> I'm just thought Why? You don't need to be <laughs> You know what I ate yesterday. Oh, what did you eat yesterday? Thank you. Thank you.